99 monkeys aware of the all, 99 monkeys aware, take one to town and share them around, 100 monkeys aware of the all, 100 monkeys aware of the all, 100 monkeys aware, you take him to town and share him around, 101 monkeys aware of the all. <laughs> oh, Jesus. That's not a new Just, one. Uh, <laughs> you know, Ramon, this is, uh, what we're bringing here tonight, I think, is uh, is one of the the. Uh, this is definitely going to be a, a good notch on our on our post, so to say, uh, bringing these these uh, amazing spirits here together to uh, share their experiences, their wisdom, their knowledge, their understanding of what's going on in this uh, thing we call Earth, this existence we call life. And uh, we'll kind of dive into this stuff a little bit and see what the hell's going on. And 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 I don't know. It's I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah, so, so we're uh, calling this the hundredth monkey radio with Tom and Ramon. Oh, <laughs> I yeah. guess I should say that. That might be important. Um, I was gonna say um, this is the first time for us we got a, a I think a cream of the crop of people. Of experience, and we're calling this the 5D roundtable because there's so much talk about, you know, 5D, 5D, and so many people talking about it. So let's talk to people who've been there. <laughs> Absolutely. So yeah. tonight we have with us uh, George Kavasilis, Kelly LaShaw, John Meyer, and sitting right next to Kelly is Perry Mills. And uh, out of this group, Perry is the only one that we don't know much about. So I want to welcome everybody to the show. And in particular, Perry, tell me about yourself. Uh, uh, what the heck are you doing here? <laughs> yeah. Well, at, uh, at the risk of uh, taking too long, I'll try to give you the, the short version uh, I think it all started for me, uh, you know, being brought up uh, Catholic in the Midwest, uh, and a lot of repression, a lot of uh, what you might call dark energy around me. Um, went off to become a, a student and a hippie, and uh, on one of my explorations as a hippie, this is in the very early 70s, I happened to have uh, an extraordinary experience and uh, in that experience, uh, the whole dual worlds was all opened up to me, and I saw the way it all worked in perfect detail. It was all impressed on me uh, directly, without words. It was an immediate kind of thing. And in that realization, uh, I had to come back and uh, spent uh, the next 20 or 30 years uh, searching across this planet uh, for the right fit for me to be able to integrate what I knew uh, where the world view was a paradigm. And uh, after uh, studying through different uh, spiritual paths, ascent paths, I went to India, had two different gurus. I finally got to a place where um, I realized it was time for me to go go with my own direct connect. And it was, uh, it was through direct connect that I started to get the best information. And so I started having contact with, uh, with some guides. I was very surprised that they were there. And then they started to uh, write through me, and I started asking lots of questions. And by the end of a, oh, a couple of years of that, I think I I came to a really nice place. I had a real good sense of uh, the magic of what I am and what we are. And I uh, hooked up I, with uh, Kelly, uh, it went, and that is its own story, the way that happened. One of those kind of divine plays um, where we were drawn together and and since then, we've been uh, writing and nonstop uh, exploring uh, 5D aspects of ourselves and getting into what I would call a more active participation in the creation of, of life in our lives, uh, as opposed to spectating and uh, you know listening only to other people's uh, stories. We decided that really our job was to be the love, to be the creator. Um, be whatever we could in the most pure way we knew how. And so in the midst of that exploration, we've uh, run into you, thanks to Kelly. She, she's done such great work with her own writing and books in the past. 
and uh, now, of course, uh, she's connected me with, uh, with, with you guys and uh, gals, and it just feels great. I feel like um, I've been alone a lot uh, because, like John mentioned in his last uh, interview with you guys, it's pretty easy to stay isolated because no one really speaks your language. And now I've got a more and more of an outlet for that and more people that we can talk about this. Mm, the great, the great coming together, yes. uh, the family reunion, yes. the galactic family reunion. Yeah. So, so uh, real quick before we move in with everybody else, Perry, have you had any um, contact with um, direct I- I- um, aliens? I hate using that word. <laughs> it, um, and I'm not talking about like higher beings, just like direct contact, for example, like George and John has? Um, I would say no. Uh, my experience is a little more personal. I've, I've had multiple encounters with uh, UFOs. I've, I've, I've talked to beings in different times, in present time, through uh, uh, one of my past uh, loves who was uh, a trans channel. I've done a lot of, a lot of work uh, that way. Um, but my the, my experience with ETs is limited uh, to just uh, having them fly over me and and hover over our house and come over and, and stuff like that. So what I have to offer, in my own view, is just uh, more of a an intuitive connection. And uh, frankly, I'm not as concerned. Well, other than the dark entity that came to you once and oh, you. I'm- yeah. It created a mantra to make it. Uh, yeah, I've been I've been attacked by uh, by astral entities. I've I've had to learn certain techniques to protect myself, um, and I've had them. I've you know I've been out of body. I've been to other worlds out of body. Um, probably nowhere near uh, uh, the type and the amount that John and George uh, have shared with us so wonderfully. <laughs> Yeah, the, you guys don't have any experience with dark energies attacking you guys, right? Karaki. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Tom. Yeah, so we want to start this off with, uh, you know, we're calling this a 5D roundtable. And, you know, there's there's uh, a lot of people just really don't have a good picture within their, their minds of, of what the 5D is. What, I mean, what does that, I mean, everybody's, you look at a chart and say, you third dimension, fourth dimension, fifth, sixth, blah, blah, blah. But they really haven't wrapped their minds around what that actually means. So, uh, maybe we start with you, George, and, uh, if you kind of explain to us what exactly is 5D? Well, for me, 5D is a frequency spectrum, uh, that sits pretty much around the middle of the universe. And when I say universe, I mean the greater universe. Um, and I'm, I'm saying that, I'm using that terminology because within the great arena of this main universe, the greater universe, there are many, many universes contained within it. And, uh, and that's what I've experienced. Other people may have experienced something different. Um, and these other universes is what quantum physics regards as parallel universes. And then, um, so 5D sits around the middle, and there's a really um, big deal around 5D simply because directly below it is a massive void. And that's where people get confused when you're in one of these universes within the great arena, and you're, and you're looking up. And what people perceive as outside their universe, uh, the, 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 the smaller universes, uh, they feel is, you know, they, they get to this void and they, they feel that that's it. Um, but it's not. It's just a void realm uh, still contained within this universe. And the difference of life from the fifth dimensional and up, uh, the, what we call the sixth, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12 dimensions is what I experienced in my journey. Uh, 12 main frequency spectrums or, or energetic bands of reality and life uh, is, is vastly different to life below that, that void. Um, for example, below that void, 
um, in my journey, I ex- there, there is no such thing as, uh, uh, sorry, above that void in the 5D and above, there's no such thing as technology. It doesn't exist. Everything is, uh, is obtained and uh, produced and experienced through organic consciousness. Um, also in the 5D and above, there's no such thing as healers because there's no dis-ease. Uh, everything is in harmony and synchronicity with life. And, uh, and so the concept of healing does not exist in those realms and above. But they do exist within the great arena of the universe. And also there is no consuming of anything in 5D and above. Whereas below that void, within the great arena, uh, there is beings for, for all, in order for a being to exist in, within the great arena, the highest levels of beings that are light beings, they still need to consume light energy in order to be and survive. So there's no consuming of anything in 5D and above. So that's my interpretation. And the other really critical point I wanted to share was we still are in the fifth dimension because from up there, from beyond that void, that's where we composed. We uh, are orchestrating and conducting everything that has transpired within the great arena. And so we projected from up there down into the great arena throughout a myriad of realities, levels and domains. And so we're still there. So all we really need to do is reintegrate with that aspect of self. And that's the pathway within each and every individual. So we don't really need to look at it as though there's just this earthly human vessel and we need to move or relocate ourselves. We just need to reintegrate with ourselves, if that makes sense. So is this where what you would, is that where you would say the higher self resides or would you say the higher self resides in the fourth? No, for me the higher self resides in the fifth. The, the fifth, sixth and seventh for me in the model that I present uh, is the realms of the higher self. And there's another void between the seventh and the eighth. And so from the eighth up is the realms of soul. Hmm. And then in the great arena, there's also what I refer to as the traveling spirit um, within the great arena. And that's what many confuse with soul. There's a lot of um, beings that are propagating um, that that version of spirit is soul. But that's the version of spirit that can be influenced um, and tainted with other energies. So that's the aspect that I call... Um, a traveling spirit within the great arena. And they're, they're the definitions that I use. They're the labels I use. Other people have other definitions and interpretations. And, uh, but yeah, they're the ones that I'm comfortable with and, and my own self discovery. Right, right. So I, I got a question for Kelly because, um, for Kelly and Perry. Uh, John and George, and actually you yourself, Tom, have had the experience of, uh, being one whole self and then seeing like pieces of yourself break up like a mirror almost and go into different aspects of mm. reality. Have you, have either one of you guys had such experience? Most of my experiences have been spontaneous and they've been very positive experiences and I, I call them journeys home. And when I'm all the way home, I experience being a whole being, the entirety of me, and madly in love with every pinpoint of existence, madly in love with every soul. And that's all of us. It's the entirety of all of existence. And when we're all all the way home, we all have that same experience, where we are um, completely enthralled with the immense love that we have for one another. And that's how we experience how literally inter- interconnected we are. And then we, if we can pull that part of ourselves in here now, that's when more of ourselves, our 5D selves here now, or whatever dimension that is. I kind of see it above the 12th dimension myself. But uh, if we can pull more of that kind of awareness inside of ourselves, we behave completely uh, more present with more compassion, in- including all of this with us. And recognizing that we're all just playing this game together. We're all family, including the dark ones, just playing this role for each other so that we can experience this profound 
experience that we're um, navigating ourselves through right now. Mm-hmm. I totally agree with that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. And that, that fifth dimension aspect that I spoke of before, that's the part of me that I experience that's just connected to everything. It's a place of unconditional love. Mm-hmm. And um, you, you just you can be everything in this universe at the same time on that level. Mm-hmm. So, John, John, anything else you'd like to add to the fifth dimension uh, description? How do you see it? Oh, definitely. Um, I want to start by telling you guys that uh, I find it very interesting that we are all here speaking all truth, but yet uh, we have different perceptions of it. Kind of like the uh, the, the parable with the uh, the blind monks and the and the elephant type thing. But uh, I'd like to approach it from a slightly different perspective. Um, the from my experience, the um, I didn't exactly know up until about, I would say about five, six years ago what third, fourth, and fifth I, you know, dimension was. But, but excuse me. <clears throat> but what I noticed was is the frequency range and the very variations of it. And my understanding of what we're all proceeding on heading into this this what we term as loosely it's five D is the accumulation of every aspect of ourselves from all other realities and parallel lives and. Uh, realms and all that stuff and bring it back as one unit and uh, uh, and we are actually in a lot of ways going uh, becoming a, a, um, a completed self that will work outside the universe but within the universe at the same time if that makes any sense so yeah you know I'm, I mean I I, uh, uh, I find it fascinating and exciting because we are all talking about you know um, what we perceive is what's coming, but it, it, they're all truths and they're all part of the whole, you know. Yeah, yeah. we're all saying the same thing, aren't we? We all yeah. pretty, we're all saying the same thing. We're just coming at it from a, a different perspective, perspective because our, we've got our own individual journeys happening. And I um, was with some Aboriginal elders, and and I, I said it's kind of like a river because they call it the sacred waters, and they've got the sacred watering hole. And the great ocean of life, and the, it's also known as baptismal waters, I suppose, in some um, paradigms. And and like we we all got our river of life, and my river of life is heading for that great ocean, and so is yours. And there's a little bit of a landmass between our rivers, but the closer we get to that ocean, the smaller the landmass, because we're all heading for that same point. So there's as the days go by, there's less differences between us all as our rivers of life get closer and closer to one another. Exactly. Well, you know, in the past, uh, those uh, that landmass between the rivers, uh, it's it, it seemed so distant that we weren't really able to perceive, you know, it, keeping with that metaphor, we weren't re- really able to perceive that it was a river and that they were going in the same direction. But uh, that excellent point, George, that, that as we uh, continue to grow and uh the internet. I mean, everybody's starting to see and able to research deeper and deeper into other people's ideas and philosophies and and experiences. They're, re- they're realizing that that we're all definitely well, all lo- all road leads to Rome, right? Uh, type scenario where where we are definitely all speaking the same thing with a different language. And it takes those different perspectives and the different languages to be able to reach everybody out there uh, because of their own experience and their own, uh, you know, their own paths that, that each and every one of us leads and how we are able to process the information and have it make sense for us personally. So... Yeah. Now, there is there's one more quick thing I'd like to add about the 5D that uh, most people are not talking about it. Now, I know that it, I've listened to some of George's um, interviews in the past, and he's mentioned upon it, and uh, I do I do love your interviews, by the way. Uh, but uh, there is, the 5D is a two-step process from what I've seen, and the initial 5D is the, the transformation that everyone is, is uh, experiencing, but there is for a selected few that do progress into the 5D into an ascension process, which is um, the completion of gathering all aspects of ourselves as we want. I so. agree. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got a, a question because, um, you know, I'm a big science fiction fan, and, and um, it reminds me of something from Star Trek, um, 
there was a, a species, they were called like the founders, and they existed in a liquid state. So in their home world, they would always be in in this liquid state all together. So any thoughts, feelings, ideas, everything was shared instantaneously with each other. So I'm wondering if the 5D is this way where, like, for example, let's say we all go there right now, and instead of being uh, George or Tom or Kelly, um, we're just all one complete thing. So whatever feelings I'm feeling, you guys all know instantaneously and vice versa. Is is the 5D something like that, or are we still completely in separation of each other? Uh, uh, the fuck? Uh, or do you talk that? Yeah, I, I kind of see it as both. I mean, if you want to connect to the the network, we'll call it, uh, you'll sense everything via you still have your individuality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Yes, I experience it as both as well. And I've had, um, you know, I'm working with people that are talking about the ascension and asking questions and they're sharing their fears with me. And one question was that they're concerned that 5D is so non-dual that there's no activity there, that there's no creativity, that there's no self-expression. And I don't experience it that way at all. I actually experience it to be more expansively creative than what we experience here. Wow. Is, that's so is that articulated. <laughs> My goodness, yeah. I, that's is, awesome. is, <laughs> is that because I can, for example go upon your experience and and your creativity and put that together easier than we would in the 3D because if I'm trying to relate my idea to you, I have to paint that picture in your head where in that state you would just know where I'm going with it and then we can go with it at the same time. Is that what you mean? Yes, well thought is more instantly manifested. Well, it is instant and the earth will be in that same reality. And so we're going to be co-creating the new earth together with our imaginations. And you, all, you also have, we're thinking just strictly mental here, but in, the, in my experience and in in what I've seen and experienced in the 5D is uh, you're going to experience color you haven't seen before. You're going to experience, you know, what people call auras. Um, you're going to see a sound, vibration, frequency. So it, it may not necessarily mean strictly, oh, I can move your mind or share thoughts. You're going to see every aspect of each individual in many different perceptions that we see now. Yeah, we end up um, feeling and uh, understanding and knowing and, and to a degree being every aspect of every individual. And the way reality uh, unfolds in those frequencies um, is we know the intention on not only our own individual levels, our own soul's journey and the requirements of what our soul needs, we end up, excuse me, working in harmony and synchronicity with all beings around us and all life around us. When I say beings, that includes mineral kingdoms, plant kingdoms, animal kingdoms, planetary kingdoms, solar kingdoms, galactic kingdoms, all different levels of consciousness and pseudo-universal kingdoms and the creator of the universe, the, you know, the consciousness. And we all understand the way life is unfolding, the way life is flowing and we understand the needs and the requirements of all beings that we are connected to that we are one with and so whenever a creative process is uh, embarked upon the first thing we do is understand to the deepest levels the journey of the individual we are with and so everybody we just end up working in this perpetual unfoldment and flow of, of energy and everything is manifested according to the needs and the requirements of every being involved in the project and the beauty of it is the energies of each being are invested into that project for like for any reality that gets created and therefore the beings who uh, volunteer to be a part of that or know it's their journey is probably a better way to put it to be a part of that co-creative process also know that everything that happens with that reality from that moment on is their responsibility and is also part of their learning of, of becoming a creator um, through the techniques and the processes that everybody's using together in that moment. And so it's a really, really big deal. So if you have like a planetary reality that, that's been created, 
that all the beings that are responsible for that reality, such as, um, say, take this planet, for example, um, everybody on this panel has played a co-creative role. And I don't mean just in this one lifetime. I mean from the very idea of this planet being created from the very beginning in conjunction with the consciousness of this incredible woman who is this planet. And so we all made these agreements way back then. And we have all been responsible for everything that has happened on this planet from the get-go to this day and beyond. And so we're all back here now taking responsibility for our creations, you see. And so we're, we're going to be responsible for it for, for always. And it's in, an incredibly deep process. And, and the amount of love that's required for us to function on such deep levels goes so way beyond words or any ability to describe it until you experience it and reintegrate with those aspects of self that are deep within each and every one of us that these levels are the levels we're functioning on naturally without any effort we are humane in our core essence and it's so natural for us to be that mm. yeah so, yeah absolutely i, I want to get um perry's um point of view of the whole 5d thing well, yeah, um, you know, I, having been thoroughly ensconced in, in the dimensional understanding of all these different dimensions, George, uh, by the way, I loved your book and, uh, uh, I was high-fiving you in my, uh, in my soul. <laughs> it was very beautiful, uh, and, and your layout of the dimensional realms, 4D and up, were very similar to the things I had learned in India. And also uh, with some of the uh, the mystery schools in in the uh, the Sufi mysteries, they talk at great length about all of those uh, planes. Anyway, so I felt like most of my life I had been spending time in 3-4-D <clears throat> trying to reduce the suffering of the arrangement. And what I had to do at one point is I had to stop looking at time as a linear affair and look at it as a spherical thing. And in this spherical uh, model that I live in, I am breathing in and out. I'm breathing into oneness with with the ultimate, and I'm breathing into the particular so that the ultimate can witness its own creations. And so for me, uh, the whole idea is uh, that I'm trying my best to suffer the least and to be generous of spirit and help others to not to suffer while they're incarnate. So instead of separating between 5D and 4D, I've decided to be all D. Hmm. And in that all D model, it's spherical, I have total creative capacity to integrate and to label and attach meaning to all of the different parts of my experience as 5D, 4D, 3D. And that's the way I bring peace to myself, and that's the way I, help, I try to help relieve the suffering of others who are in 3D and suffering. Hmm. Yeah. George, beautifully said. Yeah. yeah, George, you mentioned, uh, you talked about how we, uh, the 5D, the experience of, of helping others and how, uh, we use our intuition and we instantly know what they're going through and what the answers are and what the, what the direction is that they should be going to resolve whatever the, the issue is. Now that's one aspect of 5D. If that is the, could be, is an aspect that could be attributed to 5D, uh, that's one aspect that I see manifesting on the earth right now. There are a lot of light workers out there, if you want to use that term, that are out there doing that just that they are already tapping into that 5D or or beyond intuition and ability to be able to see into the soul of others see into the the experience of others and be able to give assistance to lend a hand to show them the door that they need to walk through and to you know hold their hand as they go through it type of thing so if if I'm understanding this right, that is a, a 5D sort of aspect that is already manifesting here. Sure, and it's about reintegrating with that, those if you want to call it the 5D aspects of self or the higher self, because what Big Mama needs right now and what our collective humanity needs right now is for us to anchor that here 
that's how this reality is going to raise its vibration, not by just Big Mama doing it on her own. This is a co-creative process. It's a symbiotic process. And the more we go within and, and access those greater aspects of self, the more we bring them here. It's becoming, another way of putting it is becoming more present in this reality. Another way of putting it is being more authentic, just being your authentic self. Because that authenticity is like, it pours forth, it emanates like a fountain from our soul essence and beyond that into our eternal essence, which is what Kelly alluded to earlier. And it, it, once that flow starts at the moment, we're trickling, okay? Right, right. And then as, as the days go on and we remove our own personal, um, you know, balls and chains and, and dross and baggage that we all personally have to um, reintegrate because of our journey through this universe. And as John said, we're bringing it, all our fragmented aspects back into balance with this one lifetime and the effect it's going to have in the universe, what I call the ripple effect, and uh, that's going to have in the universe when this reality transcends. Oh, my goodness. I mean, the... The effect is going to be enormous, and you know, oh, I'll go into it. We'll talk about that later because it's a big subject that has to do with us, other aspects of ourselves that are um, held in containment within other realities. So please ask me that question later because mm. we, it's probably not appropriate to go there just yet in the conversation. Um, but it is about being more present and being uh, having that greater ability, functioning from that greater ability. To understand others and everybody in this today that's here today we all live by that and we're living by that more regularly every day and it's a beautiful thing because we understand people so deeply it's like um in the movie avatar when the when the the native people of the planet looked at each other and said i see you i you know that's acknowledgement that i my it's like saying namaste you know what i mean mm. or um it's it's um, in Greek, it's like we, when we have a toast, they say stiniasu, which means to your aya. And aya was an ancient word for God. So it's like the God in me acknowledges the God in you. Absolutely. You guys bring a whole new meaning to uh, birds of a feather flock together. <laughs> <laughs> you, know what I, you know what I find interesting on that, and this gets this has been getting me more excited this year than um, any other previous years, and it's mainly because I start to see things happening with it. But um, here you have the top of cream of the crop, top of the top, coming into this world, which is the most densest physical existence that I'm aware of. You come in here, we struggle, we get stripped of all our memories away, we get stripped of the abilities we had, all that, and yet we're scrolling, we're climbing through the mud to climb out. We're accumulating every aspect of ourselves into it, being tested by everything the universe has, and at the very last moment, we're going to send a, a nuclear shockwave explosion when this transformation hits, and it's going to change the entire universe from here out. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah. So, so are you all in agreement that there is going to be some point where the, there's something that happens is the twinkling of an eye uh, event that that something happens uh, some you know at some yeah. point for all of us or yeah, is well, it is it an individual twinkling? Well, I, I think. think that, sorry. sorry. <laughs> okay, I agree with the, uh, George and um, and John, except for I, I believe that there's some we could flesh this out a little bit more because as we say that this is this event is going to have an effect on everything, and so the way I see it happening is everything goes through the eye of the needle, and I don't know if that's the void because some, some people are perceiving the void as what they have to transition through the void to get to 5D, and that's scary for people as well. The way I experience it is everyone goes through the eye of the needle because we're all being set free from the structure, including the, the, the prisoners of the structure, the prisoners of this matrix. So for that's, a, that's a much better way of putting it, Kelly. Thank you. Good. Well, so if, for true sovereignty to exist, we all have to go through the eye of the needle and experience God's love. And then everyone is free to go 3D, 4D, 5D, back to 1D, 2D, or, or all the way, wherever they want to go. 
And that's where I believe all of the wave possibilities split into infinite possibilities, but not until after they've gone through the eye of the needle. Mm. Yeah, and that's what I refer to as zero point. So, mm -hmm. again, yeah, we're all saying the same thing. Yeah, yeah. I think we are. Yeah. So, that is, is that... Is that like, um, let me see if I understand this correctly, because it, it kind of, going back to alchemy, is that like what they call an alchemy calcination? So a calcination of, of our reality? The eye of the needle? Would that be the same or different? That's in, yeah, reintegrating everything back into balance. Yeah. yeah. Um, I always see the eye of the needle as just being uh, the passage where no lies about the self can pass. And so whatever you're carrying that's false cannot get through the eye of the needle. And, you know, the soulful, our soulful quality is the only thing can fit. And so this process of going through the eye is only painful to the degree that we clutch to these false self-identifying structures that we hold as, you know, different ego structures, etc., different meanings and uh, religious views and what have you. So to me, it's a freeing thing, but I don't see how soul can truly uh, return the love that it acquires if it doesn't first acquire it. <laughs> Mate, I've got goosebumps all over as you spoke. <laughs> yeah, same here. So that brings me to this, this point, because there's something you guys all hit on um, in your separate interviews, and that's um, something that a lot of people are struggling with, which is bringing out your own inner light. Um, because so many times we're told to, you know, from I was a child, I've always been told, get that light from somewhere else. Um, so most of us don't have a clue how to bring that inner light. And I'll, I'll tell a really quick uh, recent story I had um I had an out-of-body experience, and I was thinking of you, George, and I again, I went and put my hands into my chest to pull the, the light out, and this time I was only able to get, like, um, up to, what's that called? Not the knuckle, but a little above the knuckle, uh, um, where the joints of the fingers, and some of the aspect of myself I felt coming out, but I couldn't fully get it all out. And I know you, John, were saying of the easier way. So for those of us who are trying to bring our inner light out, what would be a recommendation from each of you guys? And I guess you probably start off with Perry. Oh, really? Um, well, to us, uh, because I do everything with Kelly in, in, in this area, uh, I do my own work, of course, but we seem to really like uh, joining forces in this way. We decided that, and we've discovered that while we're, we've spent a lot of our lifetimes and our lives hitherto, uh, kind of getting to the truth of ourselves, of our own sonship, daughtership, of our own, um, divine, um, innate quality. And we find that although most of my life and most people's lives have been involved in the fighting through the different false identifications with our 4D identities, that really the work to us really goes positive when we start using uh, intention. And we do it very, very meticulously, and we keep our minds off of anything that looks like it's limiting because we realize we don't want to feed any of those thought forms. So I would say that what we do and what I do is that I take the focus completely out of what I think is limiting and I go directly to the remedy. I go directly to the thought fulfilled, to the idea of freedom fulfilled. I try to feel it. I mean, it's it's a practice. Mm -hmm. It's an active practice of love. Presence, what I've learned throughout all of this, is it's not a passive, uh, peaceful uh, emotion or experience. It's an active pra practice of love. And I practice this love with the earth, with, with my family, with my friends, but, but specifically with the earth and the sun right now because we're going through this transition with them. And I have memory of knowing the earth before she decided to be a planet. So I have a, a very, very intimate, uh, <laughs> a very loving uh, relationship with her. And uh, she's, she's showing me the way. She's, she's showing me uh, how this is all going, and this relationship is very precious to me right now. And so I give back to her the love that she's giving us, everything that she's given us thus far, including the dark cycles we've been through. 
for, for, it's time for us to be grateful and give back to her what she's giving to us. And so that's how I'm uh, practicing my light inside. Hmm. John? Well, I, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I, I don't want to offend any, anyone on this, but uh, this is just my perception. But um, I came into this world with memories of um, how the energy pattern works for me, at least. And from the very moment on, even before I realized what uh, chakra systems were, I realized that um, they were very limiting in uh, the energy pathways. And the pathways for me is uh, slightly wide. It's not slightly different from everybody else, but it's the way it works for me. I had to retrain myself to understand that the, the my divine cosmic self flows from within out. And the way it does that is it goes through the nucleus of, a, of the uh, atom. And by drawing the, the, my higher self, my cosmic self, my completed self through there, um, what it has done for me at least was to, um, to allow a, a, a pathway into the, into the 5D or the, and beyond. So, um, some people may call it source, but, my understanding is there is a slight difference in frequency and, and vibration on that. So I don't know if I'm making sense or not, but but I, I, I found on a cellular level, that's how I pull it through. And when I found that the more light I pulled the cell through, the more I was connected not only to myself, but to the, the, the source of this universe, but I was also connected to the source of the universe that I belong to is, you know, so it was a duality of it. So, so you kind of see a, uh, the active process of, as Ramon was describing, of, of bringing the light out is just uh, basically a natural byproduct of, of the way you're living your life now, right? Uh, it goes beyond that. It's, it, for me at least, it was a, it's kind of like if you've ever uh, shot a rifle or, or did archery, um, it doesn't take much to move that. The sights of a, of the of the rifle or the pistol that you're using, uh, and you can miss the target by miles. So the intent was very critical for me. Um, I had to come to realize that, and I tread lightly when I say this that uh, the source of this universe is the the source of, of what a lot of people perceive as God, and and I love him and respect him and admire him. But I've also noticed the the source of my own God which is in another universe, as well as we all are. You know, we all have, you, you know, we're all cosmic selves in other universes. And when I started pulling um, that energy through, um, the more I did that, the more I became what was called what George had termed, and I really like that term, a zero point, where I encompassed the, the lowest of me in this universe and the highest of me, brought it together, and then embraced it all as one and uh, created a neutral um, a zero type state to it. So... Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm making sense or not, but... Yeah, you are. Yeah, I think yeah, I got it. Yeah. George? Yeah, for me, the um, concept of uh, just reaching into your central chest area and pulling the light out was the initial physical process that I needed personally that worked for me just to break down this mental barrier, this mental block that I had in being able to not only feel my light emanating out from within me, but also to visualize it. So I just need to go through a mechanical process to initially break through that barrier. Since then, since then, it's been vastly different. I haven't needed to do that at all. I just needed that in the beginning. Um, and now it just feels, I could just feel myself just glowing as a being from within. It's like I'm turning inside out and in, in looking at it from a quantum physics point of view, I'm being a toroidal process, and that's turning inside out. It's self-sustaining. It's it's eternally perpetual and self-sustaining. And I'm reaching. It's coming out from within, like we're we're all talking about, and and that's being authentic, like Tom alluded to, John living his life, and this natural emanation from within happens, and it. And it transcends everything, and it is from deep within. And on a physical level, it is from within every single nucleus of every atom. And then it goes deeper than that. And and because each each atomical structure and the way the, the, the protons and electrons are spinning are creating a vortex energy, so it's creating a central point 
where everything is emanating out from, almost like a, you know, we're made up of all these whirling vortices of energy and, and you know, at the core point of each whirling vortice is, is like a miniature black hole. So we've got all these little portals as well, which is energy coming from either levels even beyond that. So we're turning inside out. And uh, and for me, that's that's the key. That's what Big Mama wants. And from a New Age point of view, just going to the realms of the New Age perspective, we're called star seeds. And what does that actually mean? And it doesn't just mean that we've come from an extraterrestrial race. We come from the stars. Um, for me... Uh, my, my understanding of this is that we have co-created throughout this journey in this universe and that we are, are also planets and we are also stars and we are also galaxies and, and we're also universal, um, pseudo-universal paradigms. And we have, we, because Big Mama wants to turn into a body of light, she's, we have brought our star light to this world. So, and it's also another way of looking at it is it's our soul light as well. And so we need to shine that light. These are the frequencies. And um, when Kelly shines, sings her song and shines her internal light, and when Perry does it and when John does it and Ramon and Tom and Elizabeth and when Cynthia and I are doing it together, we're individual notes in this incredible symphony that Big Mum is asking for and really that's all she needs is for us to be authentic, to be genuine, to turn inside out and shine our light. Um, in other words, allow our internal seed to sprout and shine its true essence of what we truly are. Hmm. Well that's said. so funny you say that because that reminds me of John's story. Right, John? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> <laughs> no, the one, the one where you were like uh, with that group of people and you... We're like singing this song, but oh, that one. oh, jeez, it, it it reminds me of that. Um, you want to tell that that story really quickly? <clears throat> yeah, this happened. This this was interesting because this had actually happened in my late teens, and at that time I was um, uh, from the memories I had of uh, a deeply Catholic priest and monk background. Um, I I how would I say this? I um. I um, perceived it uh, a lot different than I perceived it now, but basically um, I had the opportunity to uh, to feel not only the the energy frequencies or patterns or whatever, um, uh, but I felt the sound, the light, the vibrational, all the aspects of who I was in this. And um, I was taken. I started out. And I was taken real quickly um, to a place on the other side that was very earthen. And uh, I had a real physical, I had a, uh, a white garment on, but I could tell that there was nothing underneath. It was just a manifestation of it. And I was led in the procession with uh, <clears throat> lighted candles. We each had a lighted candle on us that grew out of our hand. And as we climbed up the mountain, which only held like, um, it was a cone-shaped mountain, and it, and it got narrower and narrower towards the top, so only one could stand on it. And as I got towards the top of it, uh, everyone's... Um, uh, for lack of a better word, we'll call it chanting, but that doesn't do it justice. It's just the, the who we are energetically, the, the vibration, the frequency, the love, the, um, uh, the sound and everything started getting stronger and stronger to the point that when I was able to be the one on top, uh, I resonated and pulsed. And as, as each one sung in the vibration, it, it followed it like a snake-like pattern up to the base of the mountain from one after another and built on each person. And as it wrapped up the mountain, it basically hit me as, as these waves of pulses that came through the mountain and hit me. And each time it did, it amplified my light, my vibration, my sound, my tone. And it just ignited me brighter and brighter and brighter until I actually transformed into this of who I was, the essence of who I was. So it, it was a very beautiful and wonderful experience. Hmm. Wow. That's a quick version. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, who, anybody can chime in on this and, uh, and, and answer this one for me. Uh, what makes this time, this 2012, what makes this time we're in right now so special? Well, for me, it's, I, I think, 
To the actual date, 2012, I think it is not the date we're all, I assume we're all in agreement with. I think we're going to have something that date only because everyone's expecting something. But I'm expecting next year is when the, I'm hoping at least, is when the accumulation of every aspect of all of us come to a climax that we reach the proverbial critical mass. Is this just the mechanical workings of, or the mechanical workings of the cycle that we're coming to that 12 o'clock point that is happening now? Or is it something else? It's both. The mechanical workings are the result of intention. And we need to look at whose intention we're discussing here. We've got our individual intentions. You know, the intention of me incarnating on the planet at this time. Why did I come here on an individual basis? So why did I come here now? And then there's the, taking a step further, there's the collective human soul. So humanity as a whole. Why, why is humanity at this, on the precipice of something great right now? And then looking at it from the planetary point of view, because this experience humanity is having can not happen in the way it's happening without the planet facilitating this reality. And then it get on the next layer. Oh, well, in between that is the natural environment. Sorry to all the beings, my beloved brothers and sisters in the natural kingdom. And then we have the planetary consciousness and we also have the solar consciousness and the galactic consciousness. So the intention of all of these beings need to be taken into consideration for what's going on here. And when we can do that, we can understand this reality. We can understand why we're here and what its purpose is and why it's on the precipice. And the intention of who and what this planet is and what's her journey. What does she want to do? Why has she chosen to facilitate this experience for us all? And what is she intending to become? And so it's her cycle as well that needs to be taken into consideration here, not just ours on an individual basis. And I see December 21, 2012 as an incredibly important time. I don't see it as the end of the cycle, but I do see it. We're talking dodecaricosa, December 21, 2012, dodecaricosa. That is the spirit accessing the sacred waters. So this is, again, you look at all the indigenous cultures and you look how, how and even if you look into religion, Christian religion and the baptismal waters, but the ancient baptismal rites were all done by women. This is something really, really important to bring in consideration. Baptism into accessing the baptismal waters or accessing the great consciousness of life here on this planet has always been, been done by woman. Well, it's, this planet is a woman. This reality is a woman. And they are the gatekeepers. And we really need to start understanding that about the women we have in our lives because they are incredibly powerful beings. And their experience compared to ours is... Us guys, we've got no idea. We, you know, we've barely, barely <laughs> scratched the surface <laughs> of trying to understand um, what woman goes through. And the more I do, the more I'm in awe. And the more I realise just how strong woman is having to endure because every woman on the planet carries that at sacrificial archetype because that's why i've got that chapter in my book the forgotten heroine because you know it's all about in religion the sacrifice of the christ and it's a male de uh, deific entity and for me the greatest sacrifice of all the greatest one of all is that of the christ sophia it's it's of the christ and the feminine mm, right. you know when you say the baptismal waters, that reminds me of the, um, what's that called? The water inside, and, and Kelly, probably you can help me with this. The water inside the womb, um, before that breaks, like the, the amniotic fluid. Yeah, yeah, like the baby's baptized into life. Absolutely. We're, women right now, it's, this is a very emotional time for anyone that has their heart open and we're feeling what the earth is going through right now, what humanity is going through right now, what our process is, uh, the, the acceleration, the compression, our emotions being like pulled forward for us to feel and, and get real with, with, with what we're feeling. And I see this as an opportunity. It's not just about when we 
transition. It's it's about now. We're, this is a huge opportunity. Our souls chose to be here for a very specific reason, not just to, for the midwifing process, uh, but it's also for us to experience our, our, it's almost like the soul is being worked like a muscle to come here in this compression and, and, and pull our light out inside of this reality and break free from the matrix. Well, our souls are gaining, are gaining a great deal from this opportunity if we if we choose to, to use it that way. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> Ruth, Sorry. Ramon, we're, we're, we're hitting the top of the hour already. So uh, we've got uh, a few minutes left here in this first segment. I want to give everybody a chance to uh, uh, share their websites and uh, their books and uh, where everybody can pick stuff up at. So uh, shall we start with Kelly? Okay, my website is liquidmirror.org. It's just like it's spelled. And my email address is Kelly Lachey, K-E-L-L-Y-L-A-S-H-A, dot, uh, at gmail.com. And your books are right there on your website, of course. Yes. Uh, John? Well, <clears throat> I don't have a website per se, but what I do have is a uh, YouTube channel, and that uh, has all the links to the Amazon pages for the books that I have. And, um, and of course, you can click direct link on your guys' website as well. What's your YouTube channel? Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot about that. <laughs> yes, right? <laughs> it's uh, it's called John's, J-O-H-N-S, Video Books, B-O-O-K-S. And it has the, uh, you know, some of the videos I've uploaded, uh, and as well as uh, the links to, uh, you know, the, the books that I have. Great, great. And George? Yeah, we've got um, our base website being ourjourneyhome.com.au and we've also got the book website which is ouruniversaljourney.com and we've also got our little radio podcast happening which is superwoo radio superwoo spelled s-u-p-e-r-w-o-o um, dot com dot au superwoo radio sorry dot com dot au great great well, uh, when we come back, we're going to talk some more about uh, the opportunities and challenges that we have facing us here uh, as we uh, come into this new time and, and these exciting times. I'll tell you, uh, so much is happening. And uh, we'll, we'll jump in deeper to this stuff. So I want to thank everybody for listening. And uh, if you want to check out the... Uh, uh, second hour of this, uh, and you're not a member, this is an excellent opportunity to hit that bump button and uh, help support uh, 120 Radio and all that we're doing. So, Condemnation without investigation is the height of ignorance. The love you deny is the pain you carry. And we'll see you guys in the second hour. Namaste. <laughs>
Welcome to the 100th Monkey Radio. This is uh, Tom and minus Ramon this morning. Uh, we're going to add a little addendum to this show that we're doing this week. Uh, I had one of our listeners, uh, that uh, Mr. Matt, and I will not put your last name out there just because you didn't say I could. And uh, Matt, we're uh, doing this little addendum just for you because I thought you uh, sent us some pretty good questions. And uh, you probably didn't know that we'd already recorded. So, George, welcome back. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Good to be back, mate. Always a pleasure. Yeah, a long time no talk. So, something like that. So, uh, Matt sent me some pretty decent questions, and I figured, you know, what the hell. I'd see if you had a few more minutes to uh, to field these for him. And uh, he, said, he says... Uh, uh, See, he says, I have these questions rarely, if ever, asked to George. I've always wanted to ask them for years. So here's his chance. So here, we'll start with question number one. Are the dramas and biological embodiments on this planet a direct result from the universal heritage of dramas and life expressions, a greatest hits of the universe all on one compact planet, if you will? Yes. <laughs> yep, I, I I knew the answer to that one already myself. Uh, yeah, uh, and and that's been covered in a lot of different from a lot of different angles there. Uh, what now? This one was I thought was a, a pretty interesting one, and uh, uh, I'm sure you will have some interesting uh, comments on it. What are the different varieties of embra of embracing duality and opposition? the varieties of it, it's an individual thing. So how I'm going to go about it is relative to my journey and the way I'm bringing about my creations back in the balance. So the way I'm going to go about it is going to be, you know, there will be quite some differences to, compared to other people, but there's also going to be a lot of similarities as well. So I, again, I'm going to say it's an individual thing, but the gen generalised process is embracing all our creations, our differences, our, our light and dark aspects with as much unconditional love and non-judgment as we can possibly do that. 
And even though at times consciously doesn't feel like we're achieving it, subconsciously we're doing it in monumental amounts, even though we're, con we're not consciously aware of it. Mm. So we can be a bit hard on ourselves at times. And you think of yourself as you're this feeble little human egoic sort of being and you're just like, what, what, it's like, it's like, what the, you know, bleep? How can someone with me, with all my fears and insecurities, possibly be this huge, great and magnificent being bringing all these creations back into balance? Well, you are, even though you're not consciously aware of it or not, or, or, you know, we, we tend to really give ourselves a hard time. Uh, I still do at times. I did this morning. I've been judging myself this morning. I just had that discussion with Cynthia, and I'm being a bit hard on myself today. And we just tend to do that. It's, it's the way we get through things. We It brings things to the surface, to our, our attention, and we get the opportunity to see ourselves um, for how we are in this moment and love ourselves more and appreciate ourselves greater than what we're currently doing. The we are capable of so much. Sorry for the pause there, but we are capable of so much. And and we are achieving, like I said, monumental amounts of, of integration and balance. And we're not consciously aware of it. It becomes a... a I, I've found in people that I've met and within myself that the more balance that I gain, it just becomes a natural part of who I am. It's a, it let you, the subconscious and the unconscious aspect of it is so big because it just becomes who I am. Uh, yeah, good stuff, good stuff. Exactly, exactly. Well put. Uh, how do we respect darkness if we have naturally developed, or if we have naturally developed to feel distressed and cautious towards darkness? Yeah, that's the program of the positive white love and light realm. That's imposing that into our psyche. We're being taught, it's, it's like someone grows up in a culture and is taught to hate another culture, to be racist towards another culture. It's the same thing. We, we are being infiltrated into our psyche by the positive white love and light programs and we're being taught to be racist and hateful and resentful and, and even live in denial of, of the negative charge of the universe where, where we are that. So it just creates more internal division. We need to embrace, embrace all life and embrace all aspects of ourselves, be it the positive, white, love, and light aspects of ourselves and the negative and dark aspects uh, of ourselves and yeah, life. I, I think there's a flaw in his question here. Uh, he says if we've naturally developed. It's not a natural development, is it? It's a programming development through society. Exactly. And, and when we talk about society, we're talking cultural philosophies, and, and but we're talking about off-world and interdimensional cultural philosophies by races who are immersed in the positive white love and light domain. So they're imposing their cultural and spiritual philosophies into our psyche, and that's the issue we have here. Right. It's like it's their resentment and their, um, you know, on one level, hatred, uh, even though it's a very, very sophisticated version of hatred, it comes across as very, you know, passive-aggressive because um, they, come, they come across as very self-righteous and, and quite elitist in their approach and in the way they see themselves. So, you know, we're, we're not allowing our, we're not being allowed to be naturally who we are. People have been exposed to all these different programs and doctrines and philosophies from all these different cultures, be it earthly or be it cosmic or interdimensional. Right, right. Now this one I think he's referring to a fourth dimensional, um, he, he said, what's the difference between creating with light in an isolated light paradigm and creating your own universe with light in an isolated light paradigm you're restricted to the the construct of that paradigm when you do it in on a universal scale you're doing it with all um, frequencies ratios and infinite possibilities basically of what light has to offer so that's that's the difference it's a huge difference Right, so that, that isolated light paradigm is within another paradigm itself that has its own laws and own limitations. Exactly, and frequencies and spectrums that one can work with, and the, and the flavor of the light, you know, might be a tendency towards being more positive in connotation, and so very few realities get created with a negative connotation, which creates a, a lot of realities 
um, if, you, if we're coming from the positive uh, side of the spectrum, the realities that get created are very passive. And so there's not many challenges in those realities and people become stagnant over long periods of time. And that's what happens. We need, um, you know, it's a, it's a universe of contrasting expressions. So when we, we have this centered state of being and then we move away from that centered state of being, we express ourselves on one side of, of the line. If we look at it from the point of view of the initial creation of a, of light, which is sine wave. So we express our, we, we express ourselves on one side of that line. And then what we need to do is to counterbalance that, we now need to express ourselves on the other side in an equal amount of charge in another expression, which completely counterbalances the initial expression, which then brings about a sine wave or vibration, um, which in its completion brings about balance. Right, right, right. How can we be sure to trust the sun and the earth? Haven't they been intentionally supporting our isolation ignorance and abuse uh, they have been and so we have too we've co-created this with them so we're all responsible for it there's no blame game here so we we really need to um, rekindle the relationship with these beings when, when you start to rekindle the relationship with these beings and get out of the headspace and and a space of blame then the love that, that we have for these beings becomes comes to the surface it comes to the fore and you know, it's an incredible, deep and loving relationship because they've gone, they've endured um, unimaginable uh, difficulties and challenges to be able to facilitate all these sorts of energies and these sorts of experiences for us to come into their solar and planetary embodiments for us to have these experiences. I say look in the mirror. I mean, just take a look at ourselves and, and where we've come from. And are we, can, can you look in the mirror and say, I love you now? I mean, I look at my past and there were points in my past where I, I could not do that. And, Same. uh, you know, I created, I, I was part of that supporting system, you know, and, uh, I've turned around and, and I think part of the, the problem that people have is wrapping their minds around the fact that the, the, the sun, the earth, they are conscious entities. And, exactly. and they have problems really wrapping their minds around that and understanding that, yes, they are conscious beings that can be an error also. You know, they have to learn too. Yeah, there's layers, there's layers of, um, the expression of a solar expression and a planetary expression that, um, you know, like Mother Earth on one layer, she's in incredible pain. And then when you go deeper um, into the heart of the Christ of Fear energy, she goes, I'm good. I'm a big girl. I can look after myself. Right. I know exactly what I'm doing. Right. Right. You know, so she doesn't need to play the victim, you know, and, and, and the martyr archetype is for her is now coming to an end. Right. Right. Could any of this have been any other way or has this been specifically intentional? This is specifically intentional by every being who has played a role in this, including ourselves. We intended this reality to be the way it is, and we absolutely 100% intended this reality to be as difficult, as challenging, as, as painful as our experience here has been. Hmm. Yeah, you know, I think that was uh, kind of the the uh, that famous free will question that you feel all the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, so that's all, that's all that Matt had in there, George. Uh, you know, boy, I, I want to thank you for popping on here spur of the moment and uh, answering his questions. You know, when I see a, uh, a email like that from a, a listener, I'm like, uh, you know, I wonder if George is okay with that. So I am, I am okay with it. They were very, very good questions, and I really appreciate the, you know, just the addendum, if you want to call it that or whatever yeah. it's called. Um, it's a really good idea, and good on you, Tom. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, George, and uh, much love to you. And, Matt, thanks a lot for the questions. Love you, buddy. Yeah, good on you, Matt. That's good stuff there, mate.